2014, 2,685 moms, dads, friends, cousins, children died in structure fires, residential structure fires. Under, uh, just two weeks ago at FDIC, there's a class you all put on. And what did they state? They stated what we have been pushing for years. They're backing it up with science. Exposure duration is as important a factor, if not more, than dose. What does that mean to you? What it means to me, what it's gonna mean to them, is that we can't do survivability profiling. We have no idea if that room is survivable or not. If we can search it, we make entry. If you don't know the limitations of your gear, go find out, right? Your face mask, 500 degrees, they're gonna come out with a new standard, hopefully 600 degrees. Your turnouts, your outer shell, some are 1350, ours are 1050 now. Doesn't make sense to have 1350 and we're sweating and when we're training, when we only need 1,050 degrees because our mask is melted off, right, at 500. Exposure duration is as important a factor, if not more, than dose. Remember that. Oh, they didn't come out. So more of our stats. On scene time to time of victim location, right? Time matters. UL agrees with us, right, with us. If we find our victims immediately, 94% of them are survived. Less than two minutes, 66. Two to four, 47%. Four to six minutes, 46%. And six to eight minutes, 36%, right? Okay, makes sense. After eight minutes, it drops dramatically. Just drastically drops, declines. But you all agree with us, time matters. Two thousand fifteen, line of duty deaths, seventeen stru and structure fires. Right, twelve of them were residential structure fires, and only two of them were assigned search. Okay, that matters. When people are telling us we're not going to go inside and search, or we're going to delay it, we have facts. If you don't have facts, it's fiction. And if it's fiction, it's emotion. Right? We don't fight fire with emotion. We fight fire with water. Civilians, 2,560 residential deaths in 2015. How many were rescued? I don't know, but we're working on that because it does matter. We need to know our wins to understand where we have succeeded, right? Putting them first is safer for us. Something that we preach. Putting them first is actually safer for us. What does that mean? Well, if you look up the Mayday Project, right? If you haven't looked at the Mayday Project, do it. I have nothing to do with it besides I read it and I preach it. 39% of another crew, of another interior crew, helped make the rescue of the Mayday firefighter, right? 31% was their own crew, 18% of themselves, and 11% RIT. We've been focused on RIT for quite a while. RIT's important. Is it the most important? I don't know. Right? This is for you to decide, but if I add up the numbers and I think about putting them first to save for us, what does that mean? If you assign, okay, right, engine one arrives, your fire tech, truck two arrives, where are they? Search. Why? Because if you assign them search, 88% chance if they go call a mayday, they're going to be rescued, right? Because we're already interior. We're that 39%. Did you assign us writ? 60%. Does this make sense? Safer for them is actually safer for us. Interior crews save lives. Not just civilians, but our own. Our civilians' lives depend on us to what? Decrease the time to locate them and decrease the time to remove them. How? How do we do this? There's a thousand ways. Millions, I'm sure, we can think of it. Split search, VES, turnout times, mask up times, line placement and efficiency, forcible entry times, ladder efficiency, assignment order, search before writ, right? Writ, 
It's on the outside. We need people on the inside. But we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about, today we're talking about the ability to identify, orient, and navigate. It starts with last talk, we talked about layouts, a little bit of era, right? Start talking about the occupancy. We're gonna add upon that. Hose, rope, wall. This is how I was taught to orient, right? 2000, when I entered the fire service, they say, okay, stay oriented. One person stays oriented, they typically told me. And how do you stay oriented? Well, you stay on the hose line. Okay, what does that mean? You stay on the, the rope. Okay, you stay on the wall. All right, so why do you stay on the wall? What do they tell me? You gotta make sure you can't miss a door. You gotta know where the windows are. Look at this house in the background. This is just a house when I was dropping off my five-year-old the other day at school. And I was like, ooh, look at that house. Look at those bedrooms. If you started doing layouts, sizing it up for search, and being oriented, and you had a victim in that room, do you know, can, do you know that you're in a bedroom? You know what those windows are at, right? You know where you're at in the structure? What if you did what they taught you? Hey, make sure your hand's on that wall. If you find those windows, you're doing the wrong thing. Because if you actually had to put a hand on your, the wall to search for a window, it's low to zero viz. And if you're standing up in low to zero viz, you're missing all your victims. So to stay oriented on all walls is a problem. I'm not saying that you can't count walls and understand if you're on the Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, how big it is. I get that. But it's not the way of orientation. It's not the only way, right? A hose, a rope. If you're 150 feet in the structure and you find a victim, would you rather be on a hose and a rope? Oh, no, would you rather? If you're on a rose or a hope, rose or a hope, a hope or a rose, what the hell am I saying? <laughs> if you're on a hose or a rope, um, and you gotta take that victim out, right? You're oriented to the, to the hose or the rope. You're gonna take them out the way you made it in, correct? Right, most likely, but on that way out, because that's what's oriented, right? You're gonna pass up how many doors? How many isolatable rooms, right? You're not oriented, you're anchored. So I would argue that your orientation or an anchor. True orientation, that's why I'm here. What does that mean? Occupancy type, era, layouts, square footage. It tells you all these things. Building construction, stairs. Just over 1% of our victims are found on the stairs. Why are stairs important? Think about a residential structure, right? Two-story standard, why are stairs important? So our bedroom is, right? If you can find the stairs, you're gonna find the bedrooms. Find the bedrooms, that's where the victims are, right? Very important, access, egress. What's gonna tell us where the stairs are? Era, construction style, what's that mean? Well, if you go into an older home, 50s, 40s, whatever, these stairs are built for purpose, right? What's the purpose? Access and egress. Well, what if you go into a 19, 80s, 90s, 2000s home. What are the stairs purpose for? Are they for access and egress? Or are they more for so that when you walk in the front door, you can have a vaulted ceiling? And you get that vaulted ceiling in, in a less square footage if you have the stairs to the front, right? Because if you have stairs to the front right here, it allows you not to use up so much square footage in your house so you can vault right away. It shows, it shows how much the wealth. It shows what you have. It's open, it's airy, whatever. It's a great room, this is what people want. What about construction style? We talked about it before. Split entry, if you don't look at this and think stairs, alpha to, to Charlie, one goes up, one goes down, half flights. And if you don't look at this tri-level, five feet into the left, one goes down, one goes up, and it goes from Bravo to Delta, you don't know your layouts. You need to know where these stairs are. We already talked about why they're important. What about windows? Can windows tell you where stairs are? Possibly, right? Not 100%. Some people will talk about operatable windows, non-operatable windows. I don't totally get too much into that, those details. But I will tell you, if you start sizing up the structure, right? Two-story standard, has to have stairs, right? So if there's non-operatable window right here, right above the door. Does that, that just means it's probably vaulted, right? But if we look more to the right, we have an extra set of non-operatable windows, but one's taller. You have, and it goes into where the floor is, so what does that look like? 
Oh, it looks like something like this as well, right? You find these on older homes and newer homes. A window that's where the floor should be, these will typically be going to be on the, this type of window is going to typically be on the Bravo or Delta side. That's where the stairs are. Why does that matter? If you grab two sides, like I try to help preach, grab two sides, this is the opposite side of the garage, right? You're going to be able to see where the stairs are. You're going to be able to possibly go split two and two to the inside, to the outside. You might make it. You might make the stairs before the outside team does. What about closets? I am not looking inside each closet for stairs, but as I check a closet, closets are typically isolated, right? You open it up, you see some good vis, you're going to check the floor, but if you see, a little, if you see the slope and you can't find the stairs, they're probably above, right? Look at ceilings. They, they might even have a small gap, a small little slope right at the ceiling level, right? Be cognizant of where that is. That's going to be in a higher vis if you can see something that high. Top down. What does that mean? Two-story standard homes are built so that it's a funnel. Your, your second story is built so that you can funnel down the first. If, you're, if you are lost on the second story and can't find the stairs, we have a problem. You probably haven't gone out a door yet. If you make it outside of a door, you're probably going to be within a few feet of stairs, right? Fairly simple. All right, we make it to the front door. We talk about this. It starts with the basics. We teach in our, in our irons class, every time you force a door, you do a life fire layout. Why? Well, because you, you can tell a lot of things, right? Repetition. We search for life. You, if you see somebody underneath that smoke, what are you going to do? Search behind the door? You're going to grab and go. But if you don't think about it now, you might stutter then. You might stall out. Time matters. We're going to look for fire, listen for fire, the location of the fire, the heat, the smoke level, right? But today we're talking about nothing changed over. Layouts. It says layouts. It's in black. We're looking for stairs and hallways. Why? Where do stairs and hallways lead to? Bedrooms and probably a bathroom, right? That's where a lot of our victims are. Doors. We're looking for thresholds and furniture. 8% of our victims are on, on couches. So we're looking at this layout, we're looking underneath doing life fire layout, not just at every door, but what about if you go through a threshold, look under, sweep real quick, you might be able to see the layout, where the furniture is, what kind of room you're in, what size you're in. As Brian also would say, what is it, an inch of visibility is worth a hundred miles of work or something, right? So you're able to reduce your coverage of what you can't see. Floor vents, I'm not searching for these. I'm not advocating for searching for these. In some floor vents, well, all floor vents are in the floor, but some vents are in the ceiling, right? Some have, I get it, some, not all homes have this type of vent. But if I drag my halogen across one of these, I hear a little metal clang clang, I probably have a window. Just know that. It's how the, it's a building, it's building construction 101, right? It's a, if it's a, for a slider, it's going to be on a non operatable side. 6% of our victims are found below the windows. Doors. Do you read doors when you guys are making entry, right? When you're making entry, some people will say that the door, whatever, 75% of the time swings towards the bedrooms. But more importantly to me, it's your interior doors that you're reading. Which way do they swing? Do they swing inward? Do they swing outward? You come to this door, right? What's behind that door? I don't even have to place it in a house or anything else, but there's only a couple things that could be on that door, right? It's going to be a closet or maybe a basement. Basements are one of those rooms that can go in or out. You can swing either way. But closets typically swing uh, into you, right? If it has a deadbolt on it, where's it going into? Probably a garage, right? What about this door? What is that? It swings into the room, right? Bedrooms, bathrooms, okay? Why does this matter? Well, you'll start sizing it up. What about floor covering? So you're going down. You start going into this, this door, you open it up, you're thinking, ah, oh, it's a bedroom, bathroom, I don't really know. You feel carpet, probably a bedroom. You feel hard floor, well, it just depends on transitions and stuff. You know, it's a hallway hard. You know, it could be still, the, still be a bedroom, but you start thinking about linoleum and bathrooms, right? And what does that mean? Well, it tells you what size of the room is, what to search, how to search it, if there's egress, what's next to it, right? What about double hung doors? You make, you force entry, you go in, you feel to the right, and you feel this door. 
You just know that it's a double hung. All of a sudden, boom, you feel it right, it's a double hung. What kind of room is it? It's a study, right? Some kind of study or whatnot. Okay, makes sense. But it lets you know what kind of furniture is inside there, right? What you're looking for, what's going on. The glass on that one will tell you it's probably not a bedroom. It could be, depends on where you live. But what about location of, of doors, right? The difference between this door, double hung on first floor on this house, or what if it was upstairs and it was a double hung door? What is it? Master, it's not just a bedroom, but it's a master bedroom, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means it's probably a bathroom, a master bath, probably some walk-in closets, right? New, a newer construction like this. It tells you what size that room is, right? It's probably a whatever, 14 by 16, but it tells you a lot of things. What about the square footage of the home, right? It will, these doors, it'll tell you, those double swing doors, they'll tell you, hey, you're looking for an 18 by 24 foot, right? With a bedroom with 10 by 12 walk-in closets. If you become disoriented, find a victim, have to call a mayday. <coughs> My favorite questions. Would you rather find a wall or find a bed? If you can recognize a room, you can recognize the location you're in the structure. You know you can predict the adjacent rooms, the next ones you're going to search with the one that your partner's in, your crew's in, right? The size of the room you're in, how to search the room, if the room's isolatable and there's an egress. This is true orientation, just the building blocks. 0530, you're tapped out to your first due. Dispatch info, residential fire. So we're already thinking residential, right? I can see what kind of rooms. Resident was awoke by a smoke detector and they saw fire in the kitchen. Okay, fire in the kitchen, right? It's a two story, it's probably on floor one. If it's a one story, it's probably whatever, mid span towards the back. We're thinking all these things, right? This is before we arrive. This is where you arrive to. Alpha Delta Corner, sizing it up, yeah. Alpha Bravo, we, as, this is Alpha Delta. Walk through here, you have a man door. This, uh, you have a vent above this window here, big windows. Right, you have uh, more vents above here. It looks like a kitchen in the back. You see the basement. What room is this right here? Okay, hold on. This is your Bravo Charlie, right? That's a huge living room. This is the opposite side of the house. Right, okay. So if you look at that, these two windows right here, two vents above, What's that first window? Master bath, right? Make sense? Okay, we go to the front door, we force the door, fire attack's going in. On that house, they're going left because they, the kitchen's to the left and the back, right? They're going in, where are we going? We're going to the right, we're going to the bedrooms, right? Open it up, light fire layout, 10% of our victims with a 40% survivability rate are within six feet of an exterior door. Okay, so what does that mean? What I want you to take home is what we have, we have implemented. Our RIT crews are active. They are proactive. They take bars, they force doors. When you force a door, you do a life fire layout. Our RIT crew might make more grabs than our search crew. I don't know, but we'll never know if we're not doing a life fire layout with, with RIT. Rich forcing all those doors. You know what that also does? It gets them inside to do a life fair layout. So when you call for a mayday, they have an idea of where they've been, right? What doors are forced, the layout of the structure, the conditions, they're proactive. Make the wait, okay. So you go in this front door. How far in and to the right is a hallway? How many feet? Okay, we're gonna size it up, right? 2,000 square foot home? Those bedrooms are how big? 10 by 10? 10 by 12, right? So how far in to the right is the hallway? 10 to 12 feet, right? However deep a bedroom is, that's how far your, your hallway is. So I don't have to necessarily always keep on that hall, or on the wall, if I know I'm targeting other areas, right? I'm targeting the hallway. I know I'm going about 10 to 12 feet in, taking a right. Does that make sense? Going down the hallway, 11% of our victims are found in hallways. Between the hours of 2100 and 2259, the hallway is the number one uh, location to find victims. Between nine o'clock at night and 1059 at night, hallway is number one. 
Come across this door. What's behind that door? What kind of room? Right? You open it up and you feel this. What kind of room? Bedroom. bedroom. What size is that bedroom? 10 by 10, 10 by 12, right? What do we expect inside that bedroom? Closet. What else? A bed, right? And probably a dresser. All right. Open it up. Exactly. We know before we even made entry, the door swings in. We have carpet. We're going to be in a bedroom. We're looking for a bed. We're going to do our monkey, right? We're going to search a 10 by 10 area minus the furniture. We're looking for a closet. We know what we're at. We're not trying to go, okay, we're not just feeling blindly and stumbling upon a victim. We are searching for a victim. Bedrooms, 43% of our victims, 20 of 24 hours in the day, out of nearly 500 of, our, uh, of their survey, bedrooms are number one or tied for number one. 17 out of 24 hours a day, bedrooms are the number one location for victims. Three more of those hours, so which makes it 20, it's tied for, it's tied for the first place, right? This is why we target our target search. Beds, 15% of our victims are found on a bed, 1% is underneath the bed. So if I told you underneath the bed 1%, what does that mean? How old are they? Okay, are they six months? No. Are they 10 years? No, they're two to five, two to five per what we have, okay? About two to five years old. What's our next room? Next room over, you already know it. You size it up from the outside. You know layouts. It's a bedroom, okay? Going over, bedroom, we already know it's a 10 by 10. Oh, what do we find? <laughs> we got a victim, right? 33% of rescues need three or more firefighters to rescue them, right? How far are we in the structure? 40 feet, whatever, right? 40 feet inside the structure, we find a victim, what are we gonna do? What are our next actions? Let's talk about what room we're in. What kind of room we are we in? We're in a bedroom, right? What does that mean? Isolate the room, close the door. We have a window on the opposite side, right? Is that, so if we take the window, start venting, we need three people at least to get her out, right? She's slippery, she's wet, right? So if we can take care of take that window, we already know we're on the alpha side of the structure because we're oriented. We know that, we, that that window leads to the alpha side. Where are all the engines and trucks on this residential structure? We already saw that the basement has a slope. No one's on that backside. Where are they all at? They're on the front. We're gonna be able to get help like that, right? If we have to take them back, her back through the hall, we, it's gonna take us a while to get down, fight fire attack that's already coming through the front door. It's low to zero visibility, we already know this, right? I'm not saying this is how we do it every time. I'm saying if you're oriented and you know what that means, a bedroom means you have egress you can isolate, you know what, you, you can make those decisions, right? Isolate the room, take them out the window. What does that do? Okay, well, it also keeps the search crew in an advantageous air, uh, position to continue our search, right? If I, we're good on air, Ted and I, we find our victim. Engine five comes in to help us out. Are we gonna pass the victim off to them? Or are we gonna take the victim out? It's gonna depend on how much air you have, I get it. Personally, think about it. I'm gonna hand them off, take them out a window, give them to them, two reasons. One, they're oriented and know exactly how far the egress is, right? They're fresh and they're gonna be able to pull her out quick, right? And they know exactly how to get out. They have energy. What do we have? We have orientation. We already know what rooms we've searched, right? How far we've gone. We know the conditions and how they're changing. We know the layout. Keep us searching. Keep us where we're at. That's going to be best for them. I don't know if you've ever tried to hand off a search in the middle of a fire. Doesn't go well. It's typically very hard. Next room over. Right? What is it? We all know that, right? Bedroom, bedroom. Look at the floor. Bathroom, right? It's linoleum, sorry. It's like 1972 linoleum. I haven't changed it yet. Bathroom. 5% of our victims are found in bathrooms. What are we searching in bathrooms? We're searching in cabinets? We're searching on top of, you know, on, on top of, um, um, what is that called? Counters, right? 
Sour, bathtub, floor, and out. One person. Get in, get out, isolate the room, right? Next door swings into you. What is it? Closet, right? Fair enough. Good job. So what are we here for? Why do I talk about this stuff? Why am I passionate about orientation, right? There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of whys. One, I have a lot of pride in our job. When I'm at Safeway and someone says thank you for your service, I thank them for a paycheck, for giving me the opportunity to serve them. Why? Because they don't owe me anything. I owe them everything. I do. They have no idea. Their thank you is based 100% on integrity and trust. 100%. They have no idea if I threw it up through a ladder today. They don't know if I came out and performed a search. I could walk in the front door, stand there for five minutes, walk out that door, and go, hey, primary complete, and they don't know. But what keeps us whole? Us. People like you, people like you, and people like me, right? We want to hold the integrity accountable. Search with confidence. So when we go to a structure like this, we're sizing up the occupancy, right? We know what we're getting into. We go to a school fire, right? We already know what. We already know what types of furnishings, furnishings we're going to have. We already know what types of rooms, the sizes of the room, the layouts, where the exits are, right? Era, right? It tells us something. Read it. The size of the structure, right? They don't have a normal layout, but it does tell us something. Stairs. What about this one? You got a dad, two, two o'clock in the morning. You got a dad that comes out, and all he can get out was, my baby is in the bedroom. This is your house. But what does that mean? This is, this is what you should see. On a two-story standard, hey, the baby's in the bedroom. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, are you searching for this door? Because I am. Because if that door swings into the hallway, I'm bypassing it. That's not a bedroom, most likely. I'm going for the target areas, the quickest. I might come back to it, but this is what I'm searching for. Be cognizant of what you're searching for because this is what you're looking for inside. You're looking for a bedroom, right? And if I say a baby, if you're looking for a one-year-old, right? You're looking for a crib. Do you know what a crib feels like? Do you search with pats? I, I have seen it over 200 million times, I swear. A lot of padding, right? When I try to close my eyes and I feel something, I'm guessing something, have I, ever have I ever patted it? No, I feel it, right? Because this, when you're not oriented, you have no idea, it feels like this. And if you don't think that's true, I'll put you through a search. I'm serious, I only learned, I literally just learned this two weeks ago. We had 200 something students, and most of them did not find the baby in this crib. Why? I wanted to know why. It's because they, weren't, they were oriented. They knew they were VES and they knew they were going into a bedroom, right? They knew that. They know what kind of furnishings are in the bedroom, but are they cognizant of what that means? So if they didn't find a bed in that bedroom, they know they're looking for a baby, right? They thought that this felt like that. So when they patted it on the sides, they just didn't know the difference because that, when it feels like that, you miss her. And that's the number one reason why every one of us should be here is to save a life, to make a difference. I'm not here for me. We're here for them. So if you become disoriented, find a victim, have to call a mayday, I want to go back to the question. Would you rather find a wall or would you rather find a bed? And think a little bit deeper on that. That bed, what does that represent? What does that mean? I'm going to tell you now, it means egress. It means isolation. It means you know where you're in the structure. It knows you know, you know the size of the room you're in. You know how to search it, what rooms are next to you. Search culture, Justin McWilliams, Brothers in Battle.